Welcome back, everyone. My name is Michael LeBlanc, Director and Senior Portfolio Manager at Canaccord Junior Wealth Management, and this is Mike on Money, uh, where we talk about uh, all aspects financial, and today we're going to be talking about cryptocurrencies. In fact, we're going to be covering it off in a four-part series. Uh, there's a lot to digest. We're going to start off today talking about blockchain, how cryptos are ledgered, and how transactions are kept track of. Uh, the next part, uh, part two, will be about Bitcoin specifically. Uh, part three is going to be talking about other types of cryptocurrencies uh, featuring Ethereum. And then part four, we're going to talk about where uh, you can trade these, the different characteristics of those different platforms, and also the different risk and volatility you take when you're, uh, you're investing on those different platforms. Because it's important to understand, you know, depending on the, the uh, currency that you're investing into, how that might react and how it's going to fit in your portfolio. But with all that, always keep in mind, everything we talk about in these videos is for educational purposes only. Uh, always do your own due diligence or reach out to a professional advisor to get advice on uh, how it may fit into your portfolio and if it's right, because uh, especially these investments, investing these in cryptocurrencies, they do have a lot of volatility and you want to make sure it fits into your risk profile and you want to make sure that uh, it, it's appropriate for what you're trying to achieve. So with that, we'll jump right into it. Let's talk about blockchain. Now, when we think about financial and currencies, when we think of our traditional model, we're a very centralized model uh, of the banks. And, it, and if, you, if you picture that, uh, you know, this, the, the bank being in the middle and all the different clients, hundreds and thousands of different clients, all communicating through spokes directly into their financial institution. But you know, all the records are being kept in one central spot. Uh, and if you think of that from a security standpoint, obviously, uh, you know, if someone wants to attack that central spot, uh, they can focus all their efforts on it. And, you know, think about uh, a model like Fort Knox. Uh, yes, it's very, very secure, uh, but if someone wants to break into it, they can focus all their energy on just achieving that goal. And if they do succeed, you know, they kind of get access to everything. With that, uh, they can also attack those different spokes that are leading into it, to so your communication into the central hub. Uh, they wouldn't be able to get access to all the gold or you know, all the financial information, but they could get access to yours. And that's where we see you know, personal hacking happen, whether it be credit card or, or bank, uh, you know, getting into your bank accounts and things like that. So it gives a, a very focused target uh, for uh, hackers or you know, bad actors uh, to be able to, uh, to try to gain access to that. You know, another type of, of, of network, you know, that you might be familiar with is a decentralized system. So a decentralized, uh, think, about, think about it as your uh, social medias. Uh, so, you know, you have all these different hubs, you know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, you know, all the different ones you might be members of, and you're interconnected with those and within your network. So you might be connected to your friend, and they're connected to Facebook, and uh, you're connected to Facebook, but you're also on Instagram. So a lot of different lines go in different ways. Uh, and if you see some bad actors trying to hack in there, they might get into one of, of your hubs. They might get into your Facebook account, or they might get into your Instagram account, or into your email account. Um, but not all. And they might not get into all your friends, but the, you know, from there, they're going to try to then branch out to, to your friend group or to your network group. Uh, so still a little more vulnerable, um, open for attacks. When we talk about blockchain, blockchain is a, um, a disconnected uh, hub network. So uh, think of it this way, is every time you communicate into the blockchain, uh, that communicates that transaction out to hundreds and thousands of nodes, right? So think of each one of those nodes as a, uh, as a hub. And, and then they are communicating now to hundreds and thousands of computers that are, trying, are, are recording those transactions. And all those uh, computers uh, have to communicate back to the hub to record the transaction. And all those nodes have to, again, confirm the transaction. So every one of those computers and every one of those nodes have to have uh, the exact same record taking place. So in order to hack that, someone would have to hack every single one of those computers and nodes all at the exact same time to tell it, no, this is where we want the money to go, or, you know, that we want to, uh, we want to get access to that 
uh, all at once. Because if any one of those nodes, uh, you know, are, are, are not providing the same information as the other ones, the other ones will cancel out the wrong one or the one that's been hacked, and and you'll only see the 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 uh, confirmed transaction from the many many other nodes that uh, confirms the correct transaction. So uh, blockchain offers a lot of security above and beyond other types of platforms that we're used to because you know the difficulty it is to actually kind of break into the transaction or the ledgers uh, and, 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 and play or fraud uh, any one of those transactions or any one of those, uh, those ledgers. So who owns it, where it is, uh, who, who bought or sold, who gave or, 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 or received the different cryptocurrency. So when you think about that way, uh, you know, another way to think about it is, uh, you know, if you're communicating uh, with an army, think of an army uh, in the centralized standpoint, you kind of have your, your, your generals in the middle uh, and they want to talk to all their platoons all around uh, and they can send out, you know, messages uh, back and forth to communicate with the generals. But any one of those messengers um, could be uh, corrupted, right? Uh, they could be traitors, uh, they could be replaced. Uh, and the message going back or forth to any one of those platoons could all of a sudden, um, you know, begin incorrect information. And depending on which way it's going, you know, can affect things differently. So, you know, a message is going out to a platoon saying don't attack, but they get the message do attack, uh, you know, could really mess up the battle. And then conversely, if, if messages come back and, and say, hey, uh, you know, uh, we're retreating, uh, but the, you know, but they're not, they're actually attacking, you know, the generals might move the other platoons around um, with the incorrect information, which could, you know, put the other platoons at risk or the other uh, soldiers at risk. So if you think about that from a centralized standpoint, Whereas on the blockchain, uh, every one of those nodes is communicated at the same time and the exact same information. And if any one of those are corrupted, um, there'd be as long as you have the majority of those, those nodes, of those platoons, given the correct information, the generals can know exactly what's happening all the time and, and they can give the orders correctly exactly all the time. Uh, so never is the entire block ever being corrupted, therefore the, the proper instructions uh, are being received and sent out. So, so that's the power of the blockchain and that's where cryptocurrencies are virtually held. So uh, a lot of people will compare them to a fiat currency. So your fiat currency, your US dollar, your Canadian dollars and, and, and the likes. Uh, and and in, in some characteristics they are, and except they, exist on these block ledgers as opposed to a uh, centralized ledger that, that we uh, traditionally work with. Now, when we talk about these you know, cryptos and how they're similar to a, a currency, um, it's important to understand when Bitcoin first came into existence in 2008, uh, you know, the whole point of it was to be a currency. And, and you know, the characteristics that we, we look for in currencies are you know, scarcity, Right, so that there's a value to it. Um, trans transactability, divisibility, right? You have to be able to transact in different amounts, uh, you know, kind of all the time. Uh, ease of use, and of course, you know, broadly, broadly accepted. So uh, that's how Bitcoin kind of, you know, came into existence uh, on the blockchain. And, and the blockchain itself, those nodes and those computers, those are what we talk about when you hear about mining. So basically every one of those computers on the individual nodes and part of the blockchain are those miners. So they could be uh, centralized uh, data warehouses that are doing very high speed, uh, very complicated calculate mathematical calculations to keep track of the ledger. Uh, or they could be someone's individual computer if it's fast enough and, and, and part of the blockchain that can be on there. Now, the way they get paid is every time there's a transaction, um, Bitcoin is paid out, is created. Now, currently there's about uh, 18 million uh, uh, Bitcoin in existence, uh, and that is capped out at 21 million Bitcoin. And that will roughly cap out by about 21, uh, year 2140. 
Um, after that, there'll be zero Bitcoin uh, ever created on the blockchain. Uh, now the blockchain, every time that transaction happens, uh, roughly, depending on how many transactions, but roughly every four years, the amount that gets paid out gets cut into half. So back in 2008, uh, when the blockchain was uh, first created for Bitcoin, uh, every transaction, uh, you know, every computer on the nodes uh, would share roughly 50 Bitcoin as payment for the transit for miners for, for, for recording the transaction. Uh, today, that's about 6.25 Bitcoin, and that's going to continue to get cut in half roughly every four years as uh, we move more closer and closer to the, the, the final cap of, of total Bitcoin out there. Uh, and then would be no more. So that's roughly uh, what the blockchain, blockchain is uh, and how it records different transactions. So with that, I'm gonna pause, uh, pick up in the next video and we're gonna talk more in depth about Bitcoin. So enjoy, talk to you soon uh, and we will continue in part two.